March Madness is over. I know. La <laughs> Last night. Don't even. Don't <laughs> even. Yeah. I mean, at least I get into it for the food and, you know, <laughs> parties. Don't even. Uh, so, listen, but it was a thrilling all game. Right, it was a thrilling right. final okay. game. Last night, the N -double, uh, NCAA crowned its champion in men's basketball with Kansas taking home its fourth national championship in program history with a win over Carolina. And then on Sunday, the women's tournament came to an end with Don Stanley and uh, South Carolina winning their second national title in five years. James Brown is here now to break it all down for us. He is the CBS News special correspondent, and he's also the host of the NFL Today and Inside the NFL on Paramount+. Plus. Uh, J.B. was even a former college basketball player. We got himself, that photo so he, of J.B. With the, with the fro. what he speaks of. I've seen of. that Harvard photo of you playing Harvard ball with that big old fro, J.B. We don't have that photo. <laughs> hey, not only the fro, but Anne-Marie, I used to be in Vlad's shape, so that was like <laughs> eons ago. But can I just say at the top, and I know I'm eating into Sharon Dow's time, it is always a thrill to talk with the both of you. You really brighten my day, so I'm all yours. You take me down the Primrose Path, and I'll respond. All right, well, let us talk about last night's exciting game. You know they say we'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. That's what it was like definitely after <laughs> After halftime, I mean, in the beginning, it was, you know, it wasn't looking good. And then everything turned around after halftime. And you know what? Sports really are such a nice a reflection of life in general in terms of, you know, what you may be down at the half, but don't give up because the first half, as you guys saw, it was all Carolina for sure. As Clark Kellogg said, they were more physical. They were grabbing the rebounds off of the offensive glass in the esoteric language. It is second chance points. They did everything right, even though their big man was injured. But look at Kansas in the white uniforms in the second half. I know it's a cliche, a tale of two halves. Mm -hmm. But what Kansas did in adjusting in the second half, they picked up the tempo. Look how aggressively they're going to the basket. They knew the big man for North Carolina wasn't at 100% with that tender ankle, so they just went to the basket. They went up and down the court, and that change tempo worked distinctly to their advantage with all the headlines you're reading now, the biggest comeback in NCAA championship history to win that fourth title for Kansas. What an outstanding game. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the women's champions, JB. South Carolina. Uh, they lost in the Final Four last year to Stanford, who went on to win the whole thing. But this year, of course, they beat UConn, which had never lost, right, a final. Uh, that's made, UConn had 14 consecutive Final Fours. Break down that game for us. So Gino Oriyama, the coach of uh, UConn, clearly in the Hall of Fame, one of the all-time greats, really does a magnificent job with his women. Look, the numbers speak for themselves. But look at what's happening in South Carolina with Dawn Staley, the former outstanding player herself, obviously being able to communicate. She's got some great talent. They buy her um, brilliance. They buy her encouragement. And they are just phenomenal. Look, over, you just quoted the numbers, Vlad, in terms of what they've done over the last few years. And they're back at it again. But I also love this. You and Anne-Marie know that I love the big picture story how Dawn Staley, the head coach, mm -hmm. takes a piece of the championship nets that of the games that she's won, and she sends them to women coaches around the country to inspire them that they can get it done, and especially um, women of color who haven't had the opportunity, but she is truly egalitarian. She's open. It's the whosoever will. She's an awesome story. And boy, has she created Dawn Staley, a dynasty there at South Carolina. Look, Anne Marie could probably put me under with the stats there, but I'm just uh, excited about what she's doing. Not me. I was like everyone else talking about her Louis Vuitton jacket. <laughs> that was trending. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, these coaches hey, are doing hey, all right. <laughs> Glad so Anne Maria is saying, let's talk about what's really important, right? Go ahead. <laughs> no, let us talk about what's really important, which is the Cinderella stories yes. that come out of uh, March Madness, right? So the big one this year was uh, St. Peter's, uh, uh, Jersey City, New Jersey. Um, everyone loved watching them make it to the Elite Eight. Uh, but I think I, I was particularly mesmerized by their coach, Shaheen Holloway, because he was always so calm and everything about his attitude said, yeah, I'm supposed to be here. Right, We're right. supposed to be Act here. Like wherever you are, yeah. that's the place to be. And he totally did that. JB, what can you tell us about him? 
Well, I want to make sure I don't run over Sharon Dowd's time, so I'll truncate it even more by saying only a, an ex-player can really relate essentially well with another player, and they are a reflection of him. He is one of the brightest stories in the game today and has earned this next step going to his alma mater at Seton Hall. Look, we're all pulling for him. He clearly is a marvelous coach who blends strategy, coaching chops, if you will, with having been an ex-player and keeps his finger on the pulse of the game and the players. I'll close with this. Red Auerbach of Boston Celtics fame said that it is so important that you don't lose the feel of the game as you're inspiring your coach and your players and your assistant coaches. And that's what Coach Holloway has done. Tip of a hat to him. Yeah, indeed. JB, as always, my friend, thank you very, very much. We love having you.